Hello everyone, my name is Rebecca and I'm going to be making a presentation on the impact of communal enclosures on rehabilitation of degraded lads in the James Flats, Kenya. Kenya's dried lad covers about 80% of her lad area and support about 36% of uh, her population, most of who are pastoralists. Her present rate, the livelihoods are threatened by lad degradation. And while adoption of sustainable lad management practices uh, is seen as a remedy, the adoption has been low. This is as a result of lack of knowledge, information, and failure to integrate relevant stakeholders and recognition of traditional institutions. The conventional agriculture extension has had uh, little impact uh, on the dry land communities, mostly because of the attributes of uh, being um, uh, marginalized, the physical terrain, and also being quite far from infrastructure like schools, health, etc. Uh, this, of course, calls for uh, more community participation in developing and dissemination of sustainable land management alternatives. Again, sustainable land management practices are usually uh, location specific. So once people have been incorporated in developing and disseminating them, it becomes easier for them to adopt the, the practices. The study area is also, as uh, formerly noted, uh, with rainfall of uh, about 300 millimeters to 700 millimeters. The vegetation is dominated by acacia and uh, grassland. Intensive grazing in the area, uh, coupled with highly erodible soil and erratic rainfall, has led to uh, a lot of degradation and disappearance of annual and perennial grasses. This has left them the lad bear. Methods, the methods that we used in our study included a household semi-structured interviews whereby we interviewed about 150 household heads. 79 were members of a community-based organization and 71 were non-members. Two gender-separated uh, group discussions were also held together with uh, six key informant interviews, the results and discussion. Uh, we wanted to look at land ownership in the James Frats uh, from the, the community perception. And uh, the information about land ownership mainly came from key informants and focus group discussion. The land is organized in group lunches. It is communal land that is organized in group lunches for each community or for ward. And in theory, this lad is at a group lunch, but uh, in reality, this lad has been informally subdivided. Uh, according to the focus group discussion, people started laying claim on lad in the 1980s and 1990s, and by the early 20s, virtually all the lad in the area belonged to individuals. A prior uh, lad usage was via migration, whereby people would uh, move their livestock to a certain area after the depression of uh, pasture in that area, they would move to the next area. So right now, or currently, land ownership transfer is through inheritance, mainly from father to sons. Uh, we also looked into the most preferred mode of land ownership, according to uh, the respondents, and 72% of the individual, uh, uh, of uh, the respondents, preferred individual land ownership. Uh, this is because they thought that better there would be better land management, there would be freedom to invest, and uh, there would be higher yields as a result of this better land management. 
uh, about 28.7% felt that there should be an integrated form of land management whereby the areas allowed the swamps that usually offer grazing area for dry uh, for the, uh, the, the the dry seasons and also the watering areas and the forests are managed communally while the land that is under individual ownership still remained under individual ownership and uh, registered and title deeds or certificates of ownership are uh, issued to the individual uh, we looked at the James Fratz communal, uh, communal enclosure approach. This concept is not quite new because traditionally pastoralists have always set aside uh, land for grazing during the dry season. Uh, there are well and physical barriers then, uh, but taboos, traditions, and uh, customs would make sure that elders had total control over who used the land and when it was used. The first enclosure in the area was established in 1982 by a charitable organization called RAI in conjunction with community groups. Uh, the groups and the charitable organization approached the elders for the rights to enclose land. And because this land was severely degraded, uh, the enclosures were viewed as experimental and learning fields. Uh, for combating and restoration of land degradation, and therefore the elders did not have a problem with uh, giving the rights. Uh, since 2004, uh, no new enclosures have been uh, established in the area, according to the focus group discussions, because virtually all the land uh, in the area had been informally uh, privatized, and all the land had a owner even when it was not in use. The impact of communal enclosures were noted by as follows. Uh, we divided them into two, whereby we had positive and negative impacts. Uh, positive impacts, one was lad rehabilitation. That was the most important positive impact, followed by improved livelihoods for those people who were you know, who, who are in groups that were managing the enclosures, uh, followed by increased productivity. On the negative, negative side, uh, there was increased vulnerability to droughts for those people who are not in uh, in uh, who, who are not in groups managing the managing the communal enclosures, followed by limited movement of livestock because of the enclosures and also overgrowth overgrazing of the unenclosed communal land, basically because when people enclose uh, land and give a certain group to use, then uh, you take away that land from the other, uh, the rest of the community, and therefore less land is left for grazing off by the other members of uh, the community. We wanted to look at how participation in a uh, groups managing enclosures influenced adoption of sustainable land management by the households. And uh, the first thing we did is look at the sustainable land management that were adopted in the area and then looked at the source of information or training on the practices. Neighbors, farmer groups, public extension were the three most important source of information, uh, which is actually good because if you train people in uh, groups or in public extension, and they are likely to share that information with their neighbor, then the efficient of the sustainable land management practices would be faster. Uh, the household that had members in groups had a higher level of sustainable land management practices uh, than those ones who did not have members in the group. Again, Groups partnered with agencies like uh, government agencies and private agencies, and members ted tended to get some benefits from these cooperation or collaborations. Those groups that had a partnership had members adopting more practices than those groups that did not have partnership with the outside agencies. In conclusion, Communal regular enclosures were found to be effective in rehabilitation of degraded regions. However, issues of resource capture, uh, whereby a few people who are resource uh, endowed uh, could be able to 
become members of a group that ha- that is governing and enclosures, bring their people and at the end of the day, uh, be able to benefit more than the rest. There was also the issue of inclusion and sustainability, especially right now that members of the community felt that it wasn't in their interests to have land managed communally. Uh, participation in community grassroots organization uh, were forward to promote adoption of sustainable land uh, management practices because people who are in those groups were likely to uh, get agriculture extension information and they were also likely to pull resources for the purpose of implementation of sustainable land management practices. Groups also are found to have strategic partnership with certain agencies and there's a uh, greater uh, leverage or improved the potential of those groups to improve sustainable land, land management for the year um, for the year members uh, the figure that is there shows how enclosures work in the gems front we have land that is bare that is uh, very degraded. Then you have community members uh, constructing soil and water management practices after enclosing that piece of land using prosopis. Then you also have people now, the, the, the lower uh, plates showing the benefits that you get from, uh, uh, from enclosures, the, the, like fattening of livestock, uh, the red is in the far light are harvesting uh, seeds for sale, grass seeds for sale. And then we also have the inset showing uh, conservation of pastures for the dry season. Thank you for listening. Do keep safe. Thank you.